it is, uh, it is a very difficult time, but we try to make sure that we keep our spirit up and so we can positively influence those around us. Um, Ying, do you want to say a few things to our, our attendees? Of course. And we want at this special time and pandemic time to still have that close relationship with our people, with our clients, our friends, community members. And uh, before we go into this seminar, I do want to mention to you that I have recently published a book. And that book is called Appointment with Ying at 8 a.m. And it is a book about starting up your business. So if you're really one of those people, have a lot of time in your hand right now, and it is a really good investment to buy that book on Amazon and to read it. Understand yourself, understand what kind of business venture you want to have right after COVID-19. So that's a little bit of myself. One more thing I want to mention, I am on national panel for taxpayer advocate um, organization. That is a panel formed by IRS. So I'm on the national level and speaking for the issues that you might face while you're working with IRS or working with IRS system. You may even have issues with stimulus check and you want to figure out why, things like that. And you can always remember, I am on that national board and I can help you and, uh, and elevate uh, the issues, especially general issues. For example, issues representing large population, then we will go to work with IRS and to take care of your interest. Want to mention that and um, because I do get credit at IRS when I mention what I am doing with IRS. So there you go. Back to you, Dan. Yeah, so make sure to, uh, we shared that link about Ying's book and she is, uh, she has written her first book. It is a um, book series. There are more to come. She's writing her second book and she is actually including um, COVID-19 chapter. So yes. um, it talking be fun. about, mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to be um, in the past eventually. So let's all hang in there. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Today, we are going to make things interesting with our Thursday um, webinar. We're going to talk about how not only to work with community CPA using our remote technology, but we're going to go ahead and dive into the questions by industry that people face when we're working with our clients and they have these questions that, you know, are very common for for an industry uh to feel and so we're going to go right in there we're going to talk about scenarios we're going to have case studies and um come up with some solutions that we we thought worked really well for our clients and if you are not yet our client you can hear those if it resonates with you and you have more questions you know who to who to contact so let's go um the first industry we're going to talk about is our restaurant and food service industry. And we're gonna go ahead and start off with our first scenario. It's basically uh, Ying, a mom and dad has a restaurant and um, they, they want to retire basically. And they're, they're wanting to take, they, they're wanting to have their son take over their business basically. But the son um, unfortunately don't have a social security number yet and uh it and instead they have he has an it um uh for those who are not familiar with it can you talk about what it is and maybe talk about what this son's options are sure so um with this you know the 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 seminar we're driving to accomplish one thing with you is to to make you understand that you can get this kind of help from community CPA. We are really not a CPA firm. We'll just calculate your debit credit and adding up your numbers. That is really a basic service that we have the computer to do it for you. Okay, we have advanced technology to do that for you, but we have our brain, our experience, and here to answer those type of questions. So what is IT? IT stands for individual, um, individual tax identification number. So 
with the T, that means tax. So whoever, whether you come, um, whether you come with a visa or you came for from different means, as long as you are a taxpayer in the country, you would have a ITIN number. Some of the immigrant in the early stage, they have ITIN. Later on, they got their green card, they, they, they have their social. So ITIN is sort of a number, almost like a transition number that you have to take care of your tax aspect of things. So mom and dad wants to retire and the son is in their early 30s and didn't have a social security number, still waiting for IT, uh, still waiting for social security number, but has an IT number. Now, can we really do that transaction? This is what community CPA actually would have the experience to help you because we are so into foreign matters. So we knew that with the son's IT team, and it wouldn't be a good idea to transfer that business to son under uh, LC or under S Corp because these entities are typically would have more benefit and it would be more correct to be with a social security number. So we say that in this case, we would recommend the son to, to set up a C Corp and a C corporation. With that, the corporation would have its own ID, would operate just like how mom and dad was operating. The only difference is that the son's ID would not come into play. The son could still go about his own life, but also have the restaurant that he is in charge of. He is the shareholder and the mom, dad retired. So they can get onto social security benefit. They can get onto Medicare, Medicaid. So all of these things mom and dad is doing is no longer tied in with the restaurant. So that would be a, you know, we can say that that offers a tremendous um, help for making the complex situation simple and the son can continue to do what he's doing and it, what if the son do have a social security number but has a job that the, he just doesn't want his W-2 messed up with all these business uh, transactions that would still be a good solution to have a C-Corp. C-Corporation is almost like an independent entity. You can see C-Corp as another child of yours, a just adult child. So you, yes, you are the president, you are the shareholder, but all the taxes, all the liability and the, the income, everything is under that company, does not pass through to your personal tax return. Best way to separating what happens there stays there, right? What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. That's kind of the C-Corp approach. Of course, there's some people say, well, no, Ying, and you forgot about double taxation. And let's just say that there's always a benefit. There's also a drawback. And a double taxation only happens when you do dividend distribution. But what if you just don't do? And if it is your own corporation, why are you doing dividend distribution so in a hurry? So there are some ways to work through the plan. By the time we do dividend distribution, you pay double taxes, you will be happy to pay. And there's always more money to be made, more taxes to be paid. And if we make a lot of money, we don't care to pay more taxes. Isn't that true? But we only care when we don't make a lot of money, but somehow we don't understand the structure, we end up paying a lot of taxes. I say that if you borrow money to pay taxes, you're doing something wrong. And if you borrow money to pay taxes, you should be our client. I don't know who's, right. who are you working with, right, Ken? We, we, don't, we, we don't tip the government. We want to give what is rightfully due, but we don't want to tip. So we want to make sure that we are in there with you, um, planning your taxes appropriately. We do that in October and November. And um, Ying, some, some of the more questions about the food service uh, industries have. Uh, I know some of our clients have asked about receipts and uh, you know, some of the things that they need to know when, when they're working with uh, cash receipts. They, they're so afraid of, using cash and they don't want to mess it up and they always want to do the right thing but they don't know so do you have any best practice suggestions 
this is where our, our firm comes in very different from the other CPA firm. Everybody knows how to add up cash receipt, so it's equals to a hundred dollars. But when come to how to account for them, and you will you ask this question to us, we understand your cultural background. So, for example, and some you know some restaurants have a whole bunch of cash receipt, and the the owner doesn't really quite understand that even though you paid those cash receipt to that employee where that employee was saying that, well, I don't really want to, I don't, I just want cash. So can you give me cash? So sure, as a business owner, you did that transaction, but don't you know that it is so much better and easier for you if you simply just deposit all the cash in the bank account and write out a petty cash check, draw the cash out of the bank then to handle it to whoever wants cash because that the, the simple doing of that will make you have a complete record in terms of your spending after COVID-19 cash will be gone and I will tell you why because there's so much sensitivity to handling cash money is so dirty money is having so much germs on it and you think people will risk their life and getting money i think that will change so that will change a lot of your operation if you still have people who just want to count cash and our our recommendation for you is that you move the cash into the bank then you draw that out of the bank at least is in the bank you can give that to to the employee. So we are a kind of firm that when we consider the answer to you and we don't just uh, assume you are guilty for hiding cash because we know some people are not hiding cash but not using cash or save the cash receipt properly. So we, we know how to organize you and uh, making you becoming much more comfortable with the way you are doing things and if you just have, if you just have a habit to spend cash and, uh, you know, buying things like that, and uh, trust me, it's okay, you can do that, but after COVID-19, things will change. And we are, we're really your advisory firm here. And we advise you on things when you work with us on the regular basis. So these are the kind of answer we think, right? Um, right as we go because situation changes so our answers to your question would be different just apply to today's situation so i'll tell you that you will get very few cash receipts after covid 19 because nobody wants to handle cash anymore so you yeah. want to think about your employee or somebody who is saying that oh i want cash and you probably gonna end up in a situation that you don't have it so you need to That's start true. working on that right now don't you think then Operations are changing right now. We have clients um, using um, government funded money to right now um, take care of their employees, but also changing the way their uh, operations working. And so they're changing their layout of their, their restaurant and they're changing and they're renovating. And these are all things that we advise our client knowing that this pandemic is going to change the way customers are going to approach businesses like restaurants. And, um, you know, Ying mentioned compliance and we, we know people are getting funded by the government and, you know, compliance is going to be a huge part of um, our, our people's daily operation. And so um, right now, Ying, people are afraid of um, even getting funded because they're afraid of being audited. And, you know, this is not just today's issue. It's always been, you know, our clients concern, you know, they don't even know what, what, what all it, it entails and they're already scared and they don't know what type of audits are out there, um, what they need to do to better protect themselves and to be in line with uh, some of these uh, best practices. Do you have some suggestions um, for those clients? Mm -hmm. So for the restaurant clients and the three type of audit happens most often. So the first one, I would list Department of Labor to be the first one. And Department of Labor come in for fair wages. And so they're coming in to look at your payroll side of operation. 
Then you have your sales tax audit from the state. That I will list them as a secondary highest audit possibility. So they come in, look at how you spend your money, whether you pay the sales taxes, right? So that's a use tax version. Then they also come to see your sales because they want to make sure that you paid, you collected sales tax, you submitted sales tax. So sales tax is very invasive because they look at your spending, they look at your earning, it is your whole picture. Then you have IRS who comes to audit you because they think you're paying too little of taxes, you're in business for too long, and the things like that, it really, there is no perfect solution So for saying that, oh, you do this so you don't get audited. Of course, nobody can, uh, can, can, can guarantee that. You could be audited by DOL because one of your worker and just what well, just upset with you and they're calling dol and tell dol wrong things about you then you get audited so there's no reason no way to really prevent you from being audited but there is a way for you to be audited but at peace the only way to do that is to really keep a good record of what you're doing and it's not that difficult if you're our client that we, you know, we can go there to show you what we can all do. But the thing is that when you are doing things on your own and you got a PPP funding and you want to submit whatever you want written on the piece of paper to qualify for forgive, forgivable loan, there is no way. And you have to know that if we are spending government money and we are in debt, with whatever they're asking we need to supply so i really think that if you never had a good accounting service done by a professional cpa firm and a look to do that now because you've got ppp funding government gonna be hungry for taxes after COVID 19 you think they will audit less no they will audit more because they want you to pay. They want to make sure everybody pays. So, um, you know, I say that our service, our full-blown accounting service helps. And we also have what we call the data match service that also help to prevent you getting audited. And that practice has been our firm for 25 years. It's very successful practice and you can inquiry about that and you know if you are i will tell you that we have over nine thousand clients and for 25 years practice just the clients we serve getting audited i can count it with one of my hand i don't even need to and just because when we do that we really make sure that our clients are doing the things that preventing them from being deemed by the government. But of course, um, there's always people coming into the door because they already got audited, they're in hot water, and then we're helping, then we discover all oh, these things should have been done earlier. Um, but that's just your decision. And you do need to find a good CPA firm, not being counters, C CPA firm with a brain, with many brains to help you to avoid those issues. Right, Dan? Right. Yeah, audit is one of those things we can never guarantee 100%, but there are things that we can do to help. And uh, we're going to go right into our second industry, uh, which is professional service. And uh, this scenario, uh, it's about a guy. He has a tax person. He has a financial planner. And you know how these go. They, um, they have different opinions, and our client is stretched. They don't know if they should work with this tax person or they should listen to their friend who is a, a financial planner and they have difference of, of opinion and they haven't met us yet and when they come to us they, they, they ask they ask who should I who should I listen and what is like the rule of thumb that you you share with uh, your clients when they are in this type of situation so two things I really want to address here you see some of the tax preparation firm, you'll find them with other services. They're selling insurance, they're selling life, they're selling, um, you know, they're your planners. And in my opinion, financial planner and a tax accounting firm should never be one. Let me tell you why. Tax people 
are focused on today. Because if I can save $5 of your taxes today, I am not worried about saving you $50 20 years down the road. Because the tax regulation, the tax laws are changing, so you really cannot count on what the tax says because tax changes. So if you can take advantage of today, don't wait for tomorrow. But financial planner are the futuristic minded people. And they want you to save $5 today. And they calculate 8% of in, uh, interest income. They go, wow, you can be as rich as $10,000 because you did something here for $5. I'm not saying they're wrong, but I personally, when I was in my 20s, I never thought I would be in my 40s. When I was in my 40s, I never thought I would be in my 50s. So, you know, it is really hard to imagine yourself from young and beautiful all the way to old and rotty. You know, it doesn't happen. So for that reason, future planning is not something really in sync with me. And I say that if you have to find an answer between your financial planner and your tax people, and you need to ask yourself a question, are you a person living for today? And you are the person living for tomorrow. And Acker Trolley, who is a spiritual leader in Canada, and his most powerful book is Power of Now. And I in sync with him. I don't live for tomorrow. I personally live for today. So if I can, if I can save $5 today, I am not worried about making that, losing that $5 and aiming for something 10 years later. If it is next year, it's already written in law, the president is not going to change, I think about it, but normally not. So I will say that, number one, you should, you should know who you are to begin with. Then once you know who you are, then you can figure out between the tax person's advice versus financial planner's advice. So we can give you that um, based on, um, you know, we can give you our answer, then you decide for yourself. Did I answer that question, Dan? And I felt yes. like it's a very big question, but um, a lot of time I came through as if I against what financial planner were doing. And it's not that I against it. It's just because I know they have no, they have no way to guarantee your interest income uh, accumulation would be on eight percent. They have no way. They did not know that the oil price is going to be negative right now, right? So who mm -hmm. could have who could have predicted the future? Why would we even bother about the future when you come to taxes? You do today, not future. So, Ying, there is a, a second scenario about a, a small operation, one man show guy in he runs around all over the place and he, you know, has his accountant, this accountant is uh, mailing things over to him and he's never at the office, let alone in front of his computer. And so um, he has like his financials and tax returns being sent to him. He doesn't ever look at them. Like what are his options and what could things be different for him when he's working with community CPA? Well, he would never run into this kind of issue when he worked with the community CPA because we don't mail out financial statement and tax return just for them to flip papers. If this person is a professional person and well, I, I can see that the more successful he is, the lesser of time he has. And uh, I think we should just dive in to show people that we don't do this kind of thing. And we actually have you with your financial statement, with your tax returns, all on your smartphone, on computer. Do you have five minutes while you are waiting for something and waiting in line or just waiting your computer to reboot? Don't you have that five minutes? If your answer is yes, I do, then you got to answer. That's what we do. We don't do stuff like that anymore. At Community CPA, we're really, we're sensitive to time. And trust me, every one of us are busy. Even though you are quarantined at home for COVID-19, you're busy, right? And why can't you just be smart about 
what kind of firm you're working with. Why are you still working with firms who send you stuff in the mail? Come on. And after COVID-19, those kind of firm would be done. They would not be in existence. Who wants to handle papers while there's a germ on it? No. So it is totally should be electronic. And Dan, dive in and show them how things would work. So here I want to show two things. Um, the first is the application on your phone. So I'm going to share my phone screen with you. So you mean our, um, our information is all on the client's phone? Well, this is your phone screen. Yes, I, I am fully familiar with that. Yes. So you see this application here called Net Client CS right in the middle of the screen with yes, the two yes. arrows with the two going arrows against on each other. Side. Yes. So this is the application you're going to need to download when you're working with Community CPA. No and cost, free, free app. It's absolutely free. Exactly. And obviously, you're going to need to have your security in line and um, biometrics and multi-factor auth authentication is all something we provide. And here, you see two things, file exchange and document presentation. This demo code could be your name. It could be your business name. It could be any of those things. And when you're here, you're going to see a bunch of documents that Community CPA is pushing out to you. So for example, this could be your 1099 at the end of the year. It could be your most recent income statement and balance sheet will all be here. There, there is my five minutes. I have five minutes. I'm just going to get <laughs> on the phone, take a look at my statement. Oh yeah, March, I'm doing great. And so this is where the time saving comes, right? Absolutely. And this file exchange, you know, uh, email is not secure. And we are in that time these days. And you can literally come in here using this app and you can upload using this plus button and upload any file in your phone. It could be a most recent receipt you took a picture of. And then you're going to just go ahead and go, come in here and upload that and send it. Once you send it, our accountants will receive it and send you a confirmation saying, we retrieved your document and we, we will go ahead and let you know right away. So, so there's no, no size limit. People uploading QuickBook files, people uploading, oh yeah, I have a client uploaded the pack picture of hers from the file exchange. So you can upload anything in your phone. And um, then isn't that right? They can, you know, if they log in through computer, they can upload any files in their computer. Absolutely. Now I'm gonna switch on over to your desktop. If you're in your PC, and you want to go ahead and go into your portal and you can just do the same thing like you would on your application, but it would be on your desktop. It's the same login information between the phone and here, right, Dan? They're same. exactly the same. And here, this is what your portal typically would look like. This is a demo portal that we created, okay? And you see that there is an accounting software here you can use. And then if you want to have your own accounting software login, we can help to get that to you. You can have this uh, software available to you. And it's just like QuickBooks. And you can navigate through here and enter transactions and enter payroll, everything. Okay? And also, you can go ahead and enter time for your payroll, okay? This is all available to you. So you can just do this while you're at home and you can push your payroll over to us and we can process and send it back to you in a PDF form 
or we can cut a check and mail it out to your employees and cut a check and mail it out to your restaurants so your managers can give it to your employees. You can go ahead and up, update your employees here. You can add or edit. And here, I wanna go ahead and tell you that your employees can also have access, okay? And we can give that to them. So they would have their own login just like you would. They would just be limited to a few things. They can see their pay stub and they can see their W4 that they can update. So real time, that, that information is going to be updated with our system. And here, file exchanges here too. And yeah, document this, presentation. Can, this is where they can pick up their files from QuickBook or from their local drive. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so you can review this, this demo that I had earlier of your 1099. You can review your income statement right here. And right now it's tax season. <laughs> Even though it's been extended, it doesn't feel like it, but it is tax season and we're going through with our clients online just like this, showing them to go to their portal and we get on Zoom and we go through their tax items one by one. So there, that is, that is our portal. So our, basically on our accounting software that you see, uh, Dan, can you go back to the previous screen? Um, so uh, we have on the accounting and bookkeeping side, we do, we, you can write a check over there and you can do receivable payables, which is your income and your expenses. You can do payroll. So all of these different modules in there, it, it, you can subscribe to them. So it is not like you get it, you get it all. It is a piece by piece and you can really start to getting used to it. Maybe you start from payroll and then you expand that into check writing. And then the, the, the thing is that to you, it is so easy, it's 24 seven, you either log on to your computer or you log on to your phone, so you will see the same thing. If you have multiple businesses, you're gonna see them all listed together. So not like QuickBook, you have to close one, then open up the other one. And with our system, you re it's really designed for entrepreneurs because there is very, a lot of entrepreneurs have more than one company. And if it is not for different type of business, it's for tax saving purposes, you would end up maybe multiple entities. And then when you go into your accounting system, it's right there lined up for you. So you don't have to close one, go to one. You literally just switch on the screen. So it is much more easier for people. And if you have a multiple companies, you want to pay bill for every Tuesday then you literally can start putting in all the bills on Tuesday, coming in, putting them all together in one shot. You don't have to close the company, open the company, and between closing, opening, computer crashes, and you lost your hard drive, it's just a lot of drama with QuickBook, but here, everything is already centralized into our server in the cloud, so you will never lose it. What you lose, is the most you could lose is one day work because everything is backed up at midnight. And if you screwed up everything, we have a client who actually um, had an employee issue. So the person who walked away from the company deleted everything, deleted everything in the system. And not a problem, we just, we lose one day work. We go back, we restore from the 12 o'clock midnight. So things like that would be available to you with no cost. When we do that, it is, when you work with that, it's already part of the service. So we want to make sure that you understand the advanced technology, the flexibility, and the freedom that you have. Because only when you can imagine the freedom, then you can request for it. If you don't even know what's out there, how do you know to ask for it, right? So, you know, our talk here is really not just about we are bragging about community CPA. We are literally telling you what's available out there. And even if 
you are not working with us, you should know to ask for that from whoever you work with because that's is available. If community CPA can do that, everybody should do that, right? And of course, we are like five years ahead of everybody, but still that's the trend where we're going. So we're just leading the trend and we want you to know. Accounting CS is supported by Thomson Reuters. And Thomson Reuters is one of the largest professional service um, software out there. Hospitals use it, um, law firms use it, uh, we use it. And uh, we have worked with so many clients who, who come to us after they get audited and we tell them, hey, you know, I wish you came to us a little earlier because now, you know, everything you have IRS, IRS already has. And, you know, I know you probably didn't have your bookkeeping done right. And, you know, those type of things. So something to consider as well, because um, you really want to have everything, all your ducks in a row to make sure that you have all your information um, properly documented. Otherwise, um, you, you're just leaving yourself out there for IRS to pick on. And so just keep that in mind. Okay, now uh, professional service, okay? Our third scenario, Ying, is that, okay, I bought a new building and a, my tax person that I worked with before I came to community CPA did all this calculation. And I am so upset because compared to how much I spent and I, I can only deduct very little. And I, I just want to know, is that really all that I can do or is there another way for me to make sure I can maximize my deduction for this building I bought? This is such a great question because when you spend $100,000, $20,000, you bought a building, right? And um, normally, and this will be depreciated because it's a commercial building. So you will use the you will you will use the building price divided by thirty nine years. So that is how little you can really write down. And what we tell our client, this is where our adv um, um, advisory service would come in. We also know that you could do very little deduction. We of course know we divided by thirty nine years, and you 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 only can deduct two thousand dollars. Uh, our advisory service would tell you that this is not the only way to do it. And we would do what we called cost segregation and for your building. And a, a simple example would be you bought this building for 200000 but all of the windows and the roofs are, you know, need to be replaced right away. And because when you bought it, it is already at the end of the rope, it need to be replaced. But your $200,000 you paid for, it does has an allocation of the cost for those buildings, for the windows and for the roof. So let's say that portion of allocation is 50,000. Then you are going to replace it next year. So does not mean your 50,000 should be depreciated a lot faster because you are literally writing off the 50,000 to put in a new value. So here you go, 50,000 versus 2,000. There is a cost difference in terms of deduction. So our advisory service is much more valuable than somebody just sitting there do your little tax return. So you come to community CPA is not because we know how to divide 39 years on your 200,000. It's because we divided with a mind and with a thought, with a knowledge of cost segregation. Back yeah, you, you're, you're, you're talking about tax planning there again. So, you know, this year in 2020, we all know that we don't want to look at our 401k right now. Nobody wants to look at our balances. Nobody wants to talk about, you know, how much they've been playing with the stock market. Um, we got a client, can't sleep at night, lost so much money. Um, what can we do for them, Ying? So if I think of innovatively, and I would ask this client, and uh, do you have other full-time job? If the client answer to me is no, I, I am just 100% devoted on the stock and I've been trading stock, buying options, futures, and I, I'm a big time uh, stock market player. And then my next question is, do you consider yourself a day trader? My client will probably say that, well, I don't know what means day trader. That means I have to trade every day 
And then my answer is no, you don't have to trade every day. But day trader means that you're spending most of your time doing planning, trading, and all your income, your energy is on the day, uh, is on the trading. Can you prove that? Then the client might say, oh, easily, because I don't have any other income. I just do this full time. I lost 2.5 million this year. There we go. And we want to do differently for this guy instead of deducting $3,000 capital loss a year. And we need to deduct 2.5 million. How do we do that? It, there is an election you can do and that we can enable you to deduct 2.5 million instead of 3,000. And these are the advisory value we give you and when you come to community CPA. Yeah, um, our next industry, we want to talk about Ying, and this is our last industry. And we have a couple more questions um, here before we wrap up in about 15 minutes or so. Um, our fifth scenario is that I have a store and things are missing. I don't know where they're going. They, I, I can't keep track of everything. And I really want to just trust people, but I can't even trust my Customers, my employees, what, what should I do in, if you're in my situation? So, uh, you know, I kind of want to point out this question. You know, you can see that this is, this is a question is asking way beyond what bean counter would do. Okay, this is the kind of question here at Community CPA we will be getting. We are getting those kind of questions. So you are touching on a lot more than just bookkeeping. But this is our clients who does bookkeeping service with us. And when we did a balance sheet a income tax, in income statement analysis, and we noticed that their inventory cost is just very high. They're a leaker business, they're in leaker business. But, you know, generally speaking, you should making about 45% of markup. But when we look at this particular uh, store, no, they're, they're more than, they, 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 they mark up a lot less. They seem to go through a lot of inventory. So our question would be that, really, did you spend that much money to buy your inventory and you only made 30% margin? That just seems to be wrong for your type of retails. Then that prompt client to say that, well, you know what? I'm not in the store very much and my parents are sick, so I was taking care of them. It's kind of running by itself. And I would not be surprised that I am losing inventory. You know, people are walking away from inventory. Of course, that inventory is very attractive. It's a high value and it's a leaker. And I can easily imagine that people, um, you know, would walk these inventories off if the, if the employees are not, you know, if the internal control is not really in place. Customer, the same, you're not there. Customer can pocket things in their pocket. So, you know, there it goes, you lose it. So, and then in our firm, we trigger our analysis of financial statement would trigger that question to you. Once we trigger that question to the business owner, the feedback would be, what do I do? You know, I have a sick parents at home and I cannot be all in the store. What do we do? We also have IT section of service in our firm, and that is chaired by Derek. And uh, Derek, uh, his last name is Sai, same last name as mine. And our last name is very rare. So if you see someone with a last name of S-A, they probably belongs to the same family. So I am related to that guy. And he is our IT guy. And he actually have this tremendous uh, CPA firm kind of IT experience. So he knows the retail store what to do. And in this case, if I ask Derek, he would come out and say that I would implement a, uh, a IT solution in the retail store. 
So of course, video cameras, and also video cameras in the way that only records when there's a movement. So you don't end up reading your video cameras whole day because camera goes 24 hours. What are you gonna do? You're gonna watch it for 24 hours? No. So he will have technology to pin, to pin the activity down so you can see them and you can have the cameras right on top of the cashier so you can see cash movement and you can have your camera on your iPhone. So while you are taking care of your parents, you are already looking at how the story is going. And then on the cash register side, you can study your cash register, make sure that nothing gets skipped. So every ticket is one by one, and so you don't lose revenue. So there are things you can do in the retail service. And nowadays, after COVID-19, they're really not going to be that much of cash running around because it's dirty, because it's a virus um, on those cash money, and the people will be more and more wanting to do things electronically. So there are things we can do. So on inventory side, to watch customer going through your store, and that part, Derek can definitely uh, plan it for you. So get a get a technology planning. Uh, service from our firm. Have Derek tell you what can be done based on your location, based on your internet speed, based on the camera quality. And he is, he really is very talented in that regard. And we already have clients coming back and saying, well, when I work from home, my internet provider is really sucks. I don't really know how to, I can't even be on Zoom because our internet is not good. And Derek would come up with a plan based on what your internet provider can do and boost it up at different level in your house. And so you can get to the optimal connection, the speed, the, you know, the in, the in load and the download, all of these technical term i don't know i am accountant <laughs> why are you asking me that question yeah you we need to have derek, derek here to show up here yeah <laughs> so the next question ying is actually more more in line with uh, our accounting and taxes and you know this the same gentleman is asking you know um i have things basically on the shelf i can't get rid of i can't get rid of it and it's just there like it's ancient and it's you know collecting dust and what are my options so that I can, you know, make sure that I can get rid of these and pay less taxes? Is that possible? Why is he not doing that already? This is called obsolete inventory, right? And in some industry, the obsolete inventory might be even more valuable. For example, in, in liquor store, if your liquor, certain kind of liquor, if you keep it for a longer time, they're more valuable, right? But most of the retail business is not like that. And you, for example, if you run a gift shop, a novelty shop, and you know things are coming in waves so at certain times something is popular then after that all of these things you don't sell is obsolete so we are you know when we read your financial statement that's what we know we will notice because we will know that your inventory number keep on going up and every year you were like more and more inventory why why don't you just write it off and then that become your expense then make you pay less taxes boy the the irs actually allow you to do that is reasonable if you are in the food like a grocery business and if you never heard of spoilage write down if you never heard of it fire your cpa firm you need to come over here because we knew in the grocery store you have a spoilage write down and do you want to know what ratio that is accepted by irs in the past we have been practiced for 20 some years we have handled grocery store audit in the past let me tell you nine percent it was accepted by IRS. So 9% of your, your purchase can be written down for spoilage as long as you really do have proofs. For example, a picture of what type of things goes out. You don't have to take picture on every, every item. We just need to know that you are having a procedure in place to write down, to throw away expired uh, product. And then as long as it's reasonable and we can deduct it 
why would we even have that question here? That just means that people are not getting the service they really deserve. This is where the difference between community CPA versus other place. I don't know why they don't tell you that. I really don't understand it myself either, but you really need to look at your inventory, know that you have right to write down them. You may ask me, oh, you know, Ying, okay, I write it down. I wrote them off in one year, but what happened if I really sell them? What happened if people start buying them? Nothing happens. You wrote it down. So when you sell, you need to report that as your income. Then you have no more cost of goods sold on those items because you already wrote it down, right? So it is really okay to write it down. There is no, no ambiguities and no hesitation. You should just do it. Um, especially now with COVID-19, boy, if you close the door in your uh, retail store, those items probably moldy, smelly, and I don't know, they probably don't look attractive at all. You should just write them off, okay? So the last set of questions we have, uh, we got about seven minutes now, is uh, about this family. And they are a huge family. They have relatives all living in the same neighborhood. So they are all know each other and they have so many friends and they really want to make sure that um, their finances basically are being talked about and people don't ha have access to it. And they know their friends do their bookkeeping and accounting and taxes and everything with us and they really don't want to um, have those seen. What, what can we, we say to our clients who have those um, concerns, Ying? It is very simple. We actually, you know, community CPA, we do audit. We do audit, we do compliance side of work. So independent is one of the key uh, benchmarks we have for all our services. For example, um, you know, we just in practice, we don't share, we don't really share what you do with the other client. We have people are innovative. They have ideas to start up a business. We don't share because those are a private trade secret for one uh, small group of people. So it is really confidentiality is in our DNA. We naturally process that. And our system is very capable. Let me tell you this. We have clients, we have employees here who has relatives who work the business with us. The relatives came first. They're our clients for a long time, but our, the employee we hired was later. So we knew that uh, existence because we, when we interview our employee, we already ask who are the people, the social circles you have here and to make sure that our, our clients are being protected. So as soon as we know that, and when the employee joined the firm, becoming our employee, not only the training is going on, and so they know their liabilities, and they know they cannot uh, disclose information, all of that stuff. And in our setting, we already set that employee to not able to see anything related to that relatives. So that is our setting. So that employee can go in to do everything they want to do, but they cannot see what their relatives is doing. So this is kind of an internal security we have, and we definitely are very big with that. So you will never come across the situation where, oh, you know, I don't, you know, client came, I don't want to be your client because one of your employees is my sister-in-law. I hate right. them. So that, that takes would care never of happen. the last question yeah. that we had here. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Confidentiality and your security is is our utmost priority at our firm. And uh, we, yeah, we, we just need, we need client to tell us what's their desire. For example, if you have a business with us, we're doing accounting, but one employee does payroll, the other employee does a reconciliation for your bank account. So we need to know those segregation of duty internally. Then we would give access to the payroll employee just the payroll for the bill pay employee just the bill pay employee so the security is really layered inside of our system and we just need to know it before we can implement that properly absolutely and um, you know i just want to go ahead and thank everybody watching us and